Hey guys, I wanted to talk a little bit today about IFTA and how it works, how you can use IFTA to buy fuel uh, and optimize your fuel purchases to save money in the long run. Um, I was going to record this, edit it all together and put it up later and I started working on it. I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and do this live. So I'm going to go ahead, wait for a few people to get in here uh, and I'll just tell you why I want to do this. So today is July 7, uh, 27th. 2018. Uh, <laughs> well, let's say July 28th, 2017. Um, it's the end of the month, and if the reporting is due. So I am uh, working on doing my own IFTA reports, and this past week I've had a lot of calls from other people uh, asking me advice on how to do it how to save money, why they have to do it certain ways, why they owe so much at the end of the quarter. And there's a lot of people that don't understand how it works or why it works or how you can use it to your advantage. So got a few people in here. I'll give it a few more minutes. Um, I'm using my little wireless mic here. Uh, is, uh, can everybody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Is the sound okay? Let's wait for that. I want to make sure that we've got plenty of... Okay, good. We've got sound. All right, so I did some calculations um, on a couple of routes, and I want to use as an example and try to show you how it works, uh, why it, it works, a few of the myths about some of the problems that people run into. So we'll get into doing all that, and I'll explain how you can use the IFTA tax in your favor. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what IFTA is. So... Okay, we've got a few people joining. Now, what I'm going to do is I, I had planned on doing this video uh, as a recording and chopping it all up and, and showing you the, the forms that I actually use and showing you how, how it breaks down. But I'm going to go ahead and do this part of it live, and I'll pull this off of Facebook, and I'll edit some of that stuff in later, and I'll post it uh, back up. But I'll just go ahead and get started now. So, All right, so IFTA, anybody that's driving a truck, most likely is in the IFTA calculations. So any power unit that is registered over 26,000 pounds and crosses state lines, okay, so interstate operations over 26,000 pounds, any power unit registered over 26,000 or if it has more than two axles, so a tri-axle truck and so forth, um, even small little hotshot pickup trucks and things like that, if they're registered and they haul weights that are over 26,000 pounds, they're also a part of IFTA. Some of the smaller units, like the uh, Sprinter vans, things like that, they may be underneath that weight and they're not required to be a part of IFTA, in which case most of this stuff that I'll talk about doesn't apply. All right, so if you are part of IFTA, you have one of these fancy little IFTA stickers on the side of your truck. I'd say 99% of the people that are listening to me or members of the Trucking with Authority group are a part of IFTA. So, so this applies to almost everyone. Now, there's two forms of thought here. All right, so if you buy your own fuel, so you're an owner operator, you need to pay attention to IFTA tax. If you are under your own authority, I'm going to give you advice on how to save money by paying attention to the pre-IFTA price. If you're leased to a carrier and you are still responsible to pay your portion of the IFTA, that advice is going to apply as well. Now there are some carriers that pay the IFTA tax and pay anything due um, for the, the owner operator, in which case this won't apply to you and I'll show you the differences as we go through here. So I did some calculations before we got on a pretty rough notes, but we're going to make it work. So this is my super artistic map that I drew behind me. So don't judge me on my art skills, but you get the gist of it. So this is the Midwest region. Now, I ran a route from St. Louis to Toledo. All right, so in my example, Let's assume that you have a dedicated route from St. Louis to, to Toledo and back, a round trip, dedicated, okay? This is a good route to run to, to show you how this works, and 
being that it'll be a dedicated route, the numbers will be consistent, all right? But the advice that I'm about to give you applies even if you're on, uh, you know, if you're running wild, if you're bouncing all over the country. As long as you're crossing state lines, this matters. So in my example here, from St. Louis uh, through Illinois, and I figured we go through Indianapolis, um, and then up toward Toledo. Basically, that's, you know, the straightest route we can get. All right, so that route, and I, and I did the math, and I'm rounding off my number. So those of you that are, are going to run this in, on your calculator later or Google Maps and all this stuff later, I'm just rounding off the numbers to make this an easy example. All right. So that route is going to be round trip miles about 987 miles. All right. So about 493 and a half or so miles one way. Okay. Now, if you are on a contract where uh, an owner operator where you do not pay your own IFTA, what you want to do is look for the cheapest fuel price anywhere along this route. All right. So in my example, let's assume that you have 200 gallons usable fuel, you know, in your trucks. All right. So it's only 987 miles round trip, 200 gallons. And let's also assume that you get seven miles per gallon. All right, seven miles per gallon. So you're only going to need to fill up one time on this whole round trip route. So anywhere along this route, going either direction, you can fill up your tanks. You only have to stop one time. So if you are on a, a contract of some sort where you do not have to pay your own IFTA tax, you want to find the cheapest pump price anywhere along that route. Okay. Now I looked, there's an app called Fuel Book. So download that app. Doesn't matter if you're on Apple or if you're on Android, download the app called Fuel Book. Even if you're at least to a carrier that has fuel discounts and things, this Fuel Book app is uh, applicable. And there, get with your carrier to see if there's a code to show you what your discount prices will be. But the Fuel Book app will show you, and you can plug in your beginning and endi ending cities and look to see what the cheapest fuel price is on your route. If you don't pay your own IFTA tax, you want the cheapest pump price available. Now, I did the research already and I figured that on this route, the cheapest pump price is uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, right inside the city, right here. It's $2 and 17.9 cents per gallon. Okay. 217.9. Now, if you fill up your tanks at 217.9, you do this every time round trip, your fuel price at the end of uh, a quarter, so let's, let's say that you do this every day, Monday you leave out of St. Louis, you go to Toledo, Wednesday or Tuesday, you leave out of Toledo, you go back to St. Louis, all right? Wednesday, St. Louis back to Toledo. Thursday, Toledo back to St. Louis. Back and forth. You do that and you do three rounds a week. Okay. That's going to be 2,961 miles per week. Okay. And you're going to buy 141 gallons on each round. And at the end of 12 weeks, now there's 13 weeks and a quarter. Let's assume that you take at least a week off, four weeks a year or so. But let's say you run 12 weeks a year on this route. Your fuel price at the end of that time frame, buying it right here, is going to be cents. if you buy all your fuel for the quarter right here in St. Louis, $11,073.68. Okay. Now, if you are not, res uh, if you are responsible to pay your own IFTA, okay, if you absolutely pay your own IFTA, you have your own authority, your own IFTA account, you're leased to a carrier and they back charge you for your IFTA miles, then you need to pay attention to something a little bit differently. Okay. So, There's another fuel stop 
in Illinois, okay? Casey, Illinois, actually. Not too far away from St. Louis. And now, you're doing the same round, so you could stop at anywhere along the route, anytime. You're going to put the same amount of fuel in every single round, all right? 141 gallons every round, roughly. Now, the pump price here is $2.23. Point seven cents per gallon. Okay, that's the pump price. That's what you pay. Assuming you don't get discounts or anything like that, that's what you're going to pay at the pump. That's roughly the second or third uh, best price along this route. But it's still, you know, you still have a, you know almost six cents spread here between St. Louis and Casey, Illinois. Okay. Now at the end of your weeks buying 141 gallons on every trip three times a week okay you're going to pay eleven thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars and forty three cents all right so roughly three hundred dollars per quarter more buying it in the more expensive state of Illinois on your pump price. Okay, so you are paying more at the pump. But here's where you need to pay attention. Each one of these states has fuel tax included in the price. Now, Ohio is 28 cents per gallon. Indiana at the pump charges 16 cents per gallon. Illinois at the pump charges 33.4 cents per gallon. And Missouri, 17 cents per gallon. So on your route, these are the taxes that you have to pay attention to. 28 in Ohio, 16 in Indiana, 3 33.4 cents per gallon in Illinois and 17 cents per gallon in Missouri. Now, why does that matter? You're buying your fuel here all the time or here all the time. Why do you need to know what the different states are? Now, that's where people get confused. Okay? So, I want to break that down for you a little bit. Now, I also ran the miles on each one of these states. Let's see where I've got room on the screen here. Looks like I can go to here. All right, so doing this 12 weeks out of the year, three trips a week, in the state of Missouri, assuming, I mean, St. Louis is right on the border. You got to go to the fuel stop, do your pickup. You only got about 10 miles or so in that state. But 648 miles per quarter in Missouri. In the state of Illinois, driving across here, you have 11,520 miles in Illinois. The state of Indiana, 16,560 miles in the state of Indiana. The state of Ohio, across that corner, 6, 840 miles in Ohio. Okay? Those are your total miles for the quarter in each one of those jurisdictions. It's super important to understand that you run those miles in each one of those states. Now, those are the miles. What does the cents per gallon have to do with that? All right? Um, let's see. Let me break this down a little more. Let me erase some of this. I think you've got the gist of what's going on here. Now, this is your quarterly. All right, that's your quarterly miles in each one of those states. Now, on every week that you do this, um, 
let's see. Okay, so for your quarter, your 648, uh, and let me put the cents per gallon in each state here, because I erased it. Missouri is 17 cents. Illinois is 33.4 cents. Um, Indiana is 16 cents. And Missouri was, whoops, uh, Ohio was 28 cents. Okay. When you, now remember I said this truck without fail gets exactly seven miles per gallon every single time you turn the key. Everywhere you go, seven miles per gallon. This is like the perfect truck. Never varies from seven miles to the gallon, at least for my example, because that'll make this math a little more uh, understandable. So what happens is, you end up owing tax in each one of these states. These are the miles. 648 divided by seven miles per gallon is gonna be 93 gallons. All right, 11,520 in Illinois, divided by seven miles per gallon, 1,646 gallons. 16,560 in Indiana, 2,366 gallons. Um, 68,40 in Ohio is gonna be 900 77 gallons. That's how many gallons you burn at seven miles per gallon. Okay, so this is the gallons burned. And this is the tax per gallon. All right, I'm doing this a little backwards because I, I erased that map, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the 93 cents, or 93 gallons times the 17 cents the 1646 gallons times the 334 in Illinois, 2366 gallons times the 16 cents in Indiana, and there's one more caveat to Indiana, we'll get to that, 977 in, uh, times 28 cents per gallon there. So, um, that brings you to the tax due in Missouri. Every quarter, you are paying tax. This is the tax that is due you have to file a quarterly tax return. The tax due in Indiana is 15, or uh, Missouri is $15.81. Okay. Tax due in Illinois is $549.76. All right. Now, Indiana, I said there's a caveat to that. At the pump, if you were to buy fuel in Indiana, you pay 16 cents per gallon at the pump. But when you burn fuel in Indiana, they also have a fuel surcharge uh, per gallon of 11 cents, making this when you're, how much do you owe? You owe 27 cents per gallon is what you owe. 27 cents times the 2366, $638. And 82 cents. All right. Now, 977 gallons times the uh, 28 cents is going to be 273.56 owed in Ohio. That total, you owe this. If you were to run this route 12 weeks out of the year, $1,477.95. And 95 cents is what you have to pay in fuel tax. You have to pay every time. It doesn't matter where you buy your fuel. doesn't matter, you know, any, how much you pay later, before, after, anything. This is how much you owe at the end of every quarter, assuming that you run that route that we showed. Every single time. doesn't matter where you bought your fuel. It doesn't matter which state you bought your fuel in. None of this matters. Where This is what you owe because this is what you burned. This is how many miles you drove in each state. This is how we come to this number. $1,477.95 is what you owe. 
All right. Let's see how much room I have on the board here. Okay, so now we know that we owe this amount, 1477.95. Tax due. So we have two scenarios that I ran. Those two scenarios are you buy the cheapest pump price available in Missouri. Now the price, if we bought it in Missouri, was um, $11,073.68. That was the total price, including tax and all. But we paid for each gallon that we bought, we paid 17 cents per gallon is what we paid into our IFTA account every time. All right, let me adjust the mic. Somebody says my mic's cutting in and out. Okay, so when you pay your tax in the state of Missouri, you paid in with the fuel you bought $863.68. That's what you paid in. But you owe $1,477.95. Okay? This is what you paid. If you bought all your fuel in Illinois, now remember, you bought your fuel in Illinois, it's $11,368.43. Roughly $300 more if you bought your fuel in Illinois. But you bought it at paying in 33.4 cents per gallon in Illinois. That's what you paid in when you bought the fuel. So what that means is you paid $1,600 90, uh, $1,697.39, rounding up, okay? You owe $1,477.95. Here in Illinois, you overpaid $1,697. So you're going to get some money back. You do get money back with the IFTA program. You do get a refund, all right? So let me erase these again, and we try to make it a little neater. Okay. So, in Illinois, we bought all our fuel in Illinois. We paid $11,368.43. We at the pump, we were paying more. Remember, we paid more, which is why we paid more at the end of the quarter. $1,697 of that was if the tax. We owe 1477 means we get a refund of $219.44. Okay, so your total there, $11,148.44. If you bought all your fuel in IFTA, this is your total fuel price after you do your tax return, $11,148.99. I've rounded off my numbers to try to make math a little easier, um, but basically this is what it's going to come to, $11,149. That's your fuel price to run this route. Buy all your fuel in, Indi in Illinois. If you bought all your fuel in Missouri, because you see on the pump price, now remind, this fuel stop in Illinois is not far from the fuel stop in Missouri. So you could certainly make it that far. I mean, it's right there. It's on your route. It's, you know, within an hour drive, you're there. These fuel stops are very, very close to each other. In Missouri, we paid 
seventy-three dollars and sixty-eight cents. Eight hundred sixty-three of that was tax, which means we still and fourteen seventy-seven is what we owed. Difference of six hundred and fourteen oh one which means we still owe, at the end of the quarter, we're going to have to pay $614 and one cent. Okay, that total is $11,687 and 69 cents. That's the total if you bought all your fuel in Missouri, that's the total. If you bought all your fuel in Illinois. At the end of the quarter, it all washes out because you fill, file that tax return and you still have to pay that tax. If you bought all your fuel in Illinois, you pay more up front, but your difference, $538.70 saved by buying fuel when it was more expensive at the pump. $538.70 saved. And that's in three months, that's in one quarter. $2,155 per year, just in fuel savings alone by buying it just down the street. That's what you save. That's a big savings just for buying fuel an hour down the road. Doing the exact same run, burning the exact same amount of fuel, the exact same route, the exact same miles, the exact same states, exact same everything, assuming that the, everything else is equal with the fuel prices not fluctuating. But typically, when the fuel prices go up here, they'll go up here as well. So they're almost always going to be a difference there. So you save this much per year just by paying attention to your pre-IFTA price. Always buy fuel at the pre-IFTA price. So that's basically how IFTA works and I am going to show you guys on a form how it actually is filed. I will try to do a, another video here on how the actual form works and how the form looks. So, a couple of things I want to talk about with this. In Indiana, there's that 11 cent fuel surcharge. There's also 10 and a half cents in Kentucky, three and a half cents in Virginia. So, Virginia, Kentucky, and Indiana have that surcharge. That does not exclude you from buying fuel there. It's, forget that, because as I showed, you pay that surcharge either way. You pay the surcharge, just for the gallons burned. Doesn't matter where you buy the fuel. So buy the fuel at the cheapest pre-IFTA price. And again, you can find that with the Fuel Book app. So check that out. Or if you have any kind of a discount program that has their own in-house app, what you want to look at is the price pre-IFTA. Now, I'm going to put a couple of notes here. The first app I mentioned is Fuel Book. That's a good app. The next place and the place to look for all of the actual prices for the taxes. IFTA is run actually by a private organization. All the states, the Department of Taxation, that you know, the IRS, the revenue service of each one of these states holds the money. But the forms and the filing and the divvying up and the understanding of where who gets how much money is controlled by a private company, IFTA, the International Fuel Tax Association. That's what IFTA stands for. It's a private company based out of Arizona. They are the ones, the only official ones that will track your fuel prices and your or your fuel tax prices. Their website is I F T A ch.org Other companies, ProMiles, 
uh, fuel book, all these will, they will show you the fuel taxes in each state as well. But this is where you get the most up to date. All right. So that's where you go. And actually, when you click into the tax section, and I'll try to show you this, when you click into the tax section, a little warning will come up and say that these taxes, these, this diagram is not complete because until the end of the quarter, they don't close that tax session out. So check out the fuel book. It's an amazing app. It'll save you a lot of money. And if to ch.org, uh, that will do a, a world of good for you as well to keep track of how much fuel tax you need. Fuel tax will, uh, fuel book will help you understand where the best price is. As a matter of fact, you put your route in and it will show you a li literally a numbered list of everywhere on the route. You know, when I did St. Louis to Toledo, it showed me one through 10, the best and worst prices in the first top 10 in order. So you can certainly just punch that in, find the best along your route. And you can break it down by either fuel price. Again, if you don't pay your IFTA, you want the cheapest price. So if somebody else pays that, that tax owed for you, then you want the cheapest price. I know there are carriers out there that do that. On the other hand, if you are responsible for paying that price, that, that difference in tax, then you want the, the best pre-tax price because you want the best fuel price overall because your taxes you pay one way or the other. It's the same tax amount. So check these two out. Now I have a few comments here. We buy 90% of our fuel in Illinois, but it helps that I live there, run a lot of miles in Illinois. That's true. Now here's another thing. As a rule of thumb, I don't know why all of a sudden that got really bright, but as a rule of thumb, uh, the highest tax states, the states that have the highest fuel tax at the pump, typically have the lowest actual fuel cost. The reason for that is competition. So you can imagine if fuel station A, like I illustrated here, just across the state line from fuel station B, they have very, very close uh, price, wholesale price to the fuel station. Each one of them, and let's, let's just assume that it's a $1, okay? Matter of fact, let me do it this way. Let's say that it's $1 wholesale price. These fuel stations are right down the street from each other. Each one, $1, all right? For example, in Missouri, it was 17 cents tax. So if the fuel station buys their fuel for $1 plus 17 cents tax, it's $1.17 is what they would have to charge for it. Illinois, $3.34 to make the exact same money just to break even at cost, $1.33. For. That difference is where the lower tax company can make their money. They can jack their fuel price up because after taxes, there's that much of a difference, that much of a spread. Okay? So in other words, there's no way that the state with the higher tax can lower their price anymore. They just can't, right? Because they have that much but they could raise their profits up to meet that spread. And that's all profit for them. They're r right near each other, so they're competing. And that difference in fuel tax typically means the lower tax state jacks their fuel prices up and adds that and puts that in their pocket. Or the higher tax state, in order to try to compete, lowers their profits down to compete with the lower taxes in the neighboring state and that can go in your pocket if you buy fuel there. So that's how that competition will help drive that. Let's see if I can see these comments. Uh, your Indiana numbers are off tax and surcharge now totals 43 cents. It may be, I think I was using first quarter numbers. Uh, 
All right, again, if you go to iftach.org, that's where you can find all your prices. And there's a, a tab to select for current fuel prices. You can also go back for previous quarters. And there's another tab to make it simple and easy. You can click to see what changes. So if any state changes their tax rates throughout the quarter or throughout the year or from quarter to quarter, you can hit that changes button and it'll only list the states that it actually had a change in their tax rate. It's super convenient if you want to make a spreadsheet so where it makes all these calculations easy for you. You can put all these individual states in one time and then before you run your tax uh, report for the end of the quarter, just go in and see if there were any changes. All right, somebody said that taxes went up on the 1st of July. That's because it was the new quarter. Um, there are times when changes will happen in the middle of a quarter, and in that case, they will have you, when you do the, the uh, tax return, it'll be a split. So, for example, if it happens um, July 1st is the beginning of the new quarter, if it was to happen August 1st, then all of your miles tracked for July 1st, or from July to July 31st, would be the first amount. And then there would be the split amount, which would be the second part of the quarter. And that would be typically reflected on your tax return. I butchered Wisconsin, Willie, because it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, really, what comes out of Wisconsin? All right, so that's about it with the question. So I am going to try to do a little bit more professional video and show you the actual forms, try to show you the, my screenshots as I do this. But I wanted to, while I had all my notes in front of me, I thought it would be quick and easy to just do a quick whiteboard presentation and show you how it works. So thanks, everybody. Share this out. I hope it helps you out. If you have any questions about how this works or if, if there's anything else I can do to, to clear this up, um, and certainly I'll try to try to do a little bit more professional rather than just scribbling on the board behind me. But if there's anything I can do to help you understand this better, please leave comments under the video and I will try to include that in the next video or just answer you here in the comments. So thanks for watching.